Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the role of phospholipids in membranes. You should then be able to describe the fluid mosaic model of the cell surface membrane. In previous videos, we looked at the structures of triglycerides and phospholipids. We saw that triglycerides have got three fatty acid molecules bonded to one molecule of glycerol. Triglyceride molecules are nonpolar, and this makes them hydrophobic. In other words, triglyceride molecules are insoluble in water. In contrast, phospholipids have got two fatty acid molecules bonded to a glycerol molecule. And remember that these fatty acids are hydrophobic. The glycerol is also bonded to a phosphate group. The phosphate group is highly charged, so this part of the molecule is polar. This means that the phosphate group is hydrophilic. So effectively, phospholipids have both a hydrophobic region, consisting of the fatty acids, and a hydrophilic region, consisting of the phosphate group. Rather than drawing a phospholipid, scientists usually represent them like this. Now because phospholipids contain both a hydrophilic region and a hydrophobic region, if we place them in water, they arrange themselves like this. As you can see, the hydrophilic part of the phospholipid molecules, in other words the phosphate groups, can interact with the water. However, the hydrophobic parts, in other words the fatty acids, are buried in the centre away from the water. Scientists call this structure a phospholipid bilayer, and the phospholipid bilayer is the basis of all cell membranes. This includes the cell surface membrane and the membranes that surround organelles, such as lysosomes and mitochondria. Membranes carry out a range of functions in cells. Firstly, they act as barriers, for example, between the internal contents of the cell and the external environment, or between the contents of an organelle and the cytoplasm. Sometimes membranes separate one part of an organelle from another part, and we'll see that in more detail when we look at mitochondria. Membranes can also be a location for chemical reactions, for example, some of the stages in respiration. And finally, membranes are involved in cell signaling. So as we saw, the cell surface membrane provides a barrier between the cytoplasm and the external environment of the cell. Because the cell surface membrane contains a hydrophobic centre, hydrophobic molecules such as steroid hormones can easily pass through the cell membrane. However, the hydrophobic centre prevents hydrophilic water-soluble molecules from easily passing through. That's because hydrophilic substances are polar, in other words they've got a charge and these substances cannot easily pass through the non-polar region of the membrane. Now I should just point out that water molecules can pass through the cell membrane, even though water molecules are polar. And that's because water molecules are extremely small, and even so this takes place at a slow rate. OK, so as we said, the cell surface membrane is based on the phospholipid bilayer. However, it contains other parts as well. I'm showing you a simplified diagram of the cell surface membrane here. The first thing to notice is that the cell surface membrane contains a large number of protein molecules. Some of these proteins are only on one side of the membrane, whereas other proteins span the membrane from one side to the other. We'll be taking a detailed look at the function of membrane proteins in the next video. You'll notice that the cell surface membrane also contains cholesterol, and we saw cholesterol in the videos on lipids. I'm showing you the structure of cholesterol here. As you can see, cholesterol molecules have a polar hydrophilic group at one end. This group can attract the polar head groups on the phospholipid molecules. The rest of the cholesterol molecule is nonpolar and hydrophobic. This part of the cholesterol molecule can attract the nonpolar fatty acids in the phospholipids. So because cholesterol interacts with phospholipids, it increases the strength of the cell surface membrane. This makes the membrane more stable and less likely to get damaged. Also, cholesterol reduces the sideways movement of phospholipids and other molecules in the membrane, and this helps to control the fluidity of the membrane. This prevents the membrane from becoming too fluid under warm conditions and too rigid under cool conditions. Finally, by packing the spaces between phospholipids, cholesterol helps to reduce the movement of water-soluble chemicals across the cell surface membrane. OK, now scientists call the structure of the cell surface membrane the fluid mosaic model, and you need to be able to describe what this means. Firstly, the word fluid is used because the phospholipid molecules can move around within each layer, and this means that the membrane is flexible and can change shape. The word mosaic is used because the membrane is studded with protein molecules, and the arrangement of these proteins varies, 
a bit like the tiles in a mosaic. OK, so hopefully now you can describe the structure of cell surface membranes and what's meant by the fluid mosaic model. Thank you.